Justin, do you, do you want to give your take on either the bad, the ugly, or, or both uh, for the Solana side that's out, outside of the, the scope of the conversation that, that we just had? So something new. Yeah, I mean, I didn't touch upon the, 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 the bad facts, but in some sense, they're, they're not really important. And as David said, like they will just dwindle with the passage of time. So there's all sorts of bad facts, like the outages, uh, you know, being you know, very proximate to you know, the largest f- financial fraudster since Madoff, uh, the the misleading marketing. Like even today, I went on you know Solana Compass. I thought this marketing was kind of gone, but still, there's this marketing that Solana can do 65,000 transactions per second, which is first of all that that was a claim that was made four years ago. Um, and it, it's still no, not achieved. You can, you can you can go run the code yourself and test it at a very very simple transfer. Okay, show me on production. There's also um, you know bad present facts. Uh, there's there's no client diversity. There's no formal spec. There's 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 no PBS. There's just general immaturity. But again, I think these are not you know fundamental things because they're being worked on. You know, there's another client being worked on. I'm sure there's some some academic somewhere that's working on a formal spec. And I do know that Gito is working on, on PBS. So all of these things will get resolved. But then there's a final category of items in this bad bucket, which is uh, the bad takes. Uh, and in my opinion, um, there's a couple of bad takes, Anatoly, that you have been uh, spreading, which hopefully this, this podcast can help you spread less. One is this idea that issuance is not a cost to the network. Uh, now, there's a very simple reason why it is a cost, and it has to do with taxes. My assumption, Anatoly, is that you pay your taxes. Is that correct? Of course. Okay. So if you were to stake and you were to make, let's say, a million dollars of income staking, you would have to... My understanding is that you're based in California. And I looked it up. The income taxes in California is roughly 50%. So you would have to pay half a million dollars of income taxes on your staking. That is direct sell pressure. That is a cost to the network. Now, Solana is roughly speaking a one hundred uh, billion dollar network. Cell pressure is not a cost. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we have to go into this. Okay. Wow. The the value, like the value of an asset, is not determined by how much is sold. Like it has, if you're talking about like how much Apple Apple stock somebody sells, does not is not a cost to Apple. Okay, so someone has to pay for these costs. So for example, in, in, sure. in Bitcoin, like someone has to pay for the electricity, someone has to pay for the e-waste That's, and the that hash is rate. A cost. That is yes. an actual cost to run the network. That's a physical and cost. And in the case, you... yes, it's a physical cost, sure. But like taxes, even though it's like not so physical. Every, so it, every share of Apple stock sold is a cost to Apple. No, like if, if there were, let's say that there were if no I, taxes. Let's say that we I, in, so live in a world without Apple taxes. So if I sell Apple stock and I pay taxes on it, that's a cost to Apple. Are you differentiating in Italy no, between a cost to, a cost to Apple and like sell pressure? Are these kind of different uh, concepts? Sell pressure, in your mind? sell pressure is a local event that's temporal, but the value of the company is based on Apple. It's based on their future cash flow, and in the U.S., the monetary market will expand to capture that value. Somebody will go buy all that stock because the future cash flow of Apple is so much worth so much. So like selling Apple stock is not a cost to Apple. That's that's like obvious but to to everyone. A- Apple does not <laughs> issue stock, to, you know, to 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 pay for its security. So Solana is a roughly 100 billion dollar network. Roughly speaking, 5% but of issuance per year, which means it's that It's not for its Solana security. <laughs> which Security means that two point five doesn't come from the issuance. That's absurd. Two point five billion dollars per year of taxes is being borne by the Solana token holders. If we were to live in a world where there were no taxes, then this sell pressure would not exist. That is definitely a burden. So to this the is this is like a complex thing to analyze because people that are offshore can earn their rewards offshore and only pay taxes on value they re- appropriate to the US. Okay, but and let's like take your funds. example. Sure. Anatoly, do you contribute to sell pressure of, of Solana? Probably. But like, okay. sure. is that a burden like, and to- I pay my taxes. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> that does not change 
the future cash flow of any asset, like when somebody sells their stock. So it has no relevance on that. It is, it is the exact same thing as proof of work. In the context of proof it's of work, the miners It's absolutely the opposite of proof of work. Proof of work actually have to go <laughs> buy electricity and burn an external exogenous asset to run yeah, this You thing. have to go buy an exogenous asset called US dollars in order to be able to pay your taxes. And in doing so, you're selling your Solana. That's does not, it's, there's not a cost to the network. That's like... Anatoly, you it, said something else here, which is like issuance does not provide economic security. Uh, did I hear you correctly there? I'm, I'm wondering yes. if you could uh, say that again. First, and, it does not provide security. Security of the network is the physical boxes and links. Like if I'm running a system that cares about detecting double spends and invalid state transitions, I run a whole bunch of nodes, a whole bunch of clients, and make it really, really hard for an attacker to partition my my clients such that they can double spend. So if they try to double spend, they have to reveal two headers to two different sides of the network, and they don't know which nodes are mine, right? So it becomes the no, more no, more nodes I run, and the longer I wait, the harder it is for the attacker to do the double spend. So it's irrelevant. Like this is why we don't see double spends on the Solana testnet. We have as much economic security in the Solana testnet as the Ethereum mainnet. It's as good at defending against double spends. <laughs> Every the Chihuahua Tenderman chain has seen as many double spend attacks as Ethereum mainnet because it's as good as defending it against double spends as Ethereum mainnet. So this ties into the second bad take that you know you've just spread and you you, you constantly spread, which is basically that you're saying that economic security is a meme. And you 100%. are right in the sense that economic security <laughs> is not necessary to verify the correctness of blocks. I run a full node. If a block's invalid, I just filter it out. Yep. And then there's these two other things that economic security could potentially be helpful for. One is, as you said, double spends. Now, it turns out that doing a double spend, you know, you need to have a, a very, very good reason for, 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 for doing so. Um, and, you know, there's a little bit of a tangent, but we can also just completely solve double spends with cryptography. There's this notion called one-shot signatures, and it's, it turns out double spends is not fundamental to, to consensus. But now let's focus on where economic security is fundamental, which is to do with liveness and censorship resistance. Let's say that I can 51% attack a chain. Then what I can do is I can selectively filter out transactions. For example, yeah. I can filter out Oracle transactions. I could filter out liquidations. I could filter out fraud proofs. I could filter out buy orders or sell orders. I can manipulate markets. Now, let's say that I can make a billion dollars manipulating markets through this selective uh, censorship. And the economic security is, let's say, $1 million. Well, now it's a no-brainer for me to invest the $1 million to go 51% attack and make a billion dollars of profit. And so economic security is not a meme. It is fundamental to censorship resistance. When you talk about security... It implies safety. No. Sure. No, no. There's two aspects of security, <laughs> safety and liveness. This is basics. Sure. Sure. But when we talk about uh, security, you would want to place safety over liveness. Right? No, no, no. They both are important. So you would allow a network to run with an invalid state transition. And no, no, they're both important. We, we've we so, talked about this. The invalid right. state transitions so, are easy so to safety. fix just because you can run a full node and you can just discard them immediately. This is something that has been known for 15 years since Bitcoin. If you run a full Bitcoin node and some sort of miner tries to create an invalid Bitcoin chain that prints, you know, 10 trillion uh, BTC, it will just get rejected. Of course, of course. And that could cause a liveness failure if the vast majority of the network is trying to produce invalid nodes, like invalid blocks. You have no confirmation, you can't tell, right? You, it's effectively a liveness failure. So you pick safety over liveness. Any, any case, like economic security to a lot of folks implies safety. So no. when we talk about censorship resistance and, and liveness, it does have impact there, but it does not provide So it's enough. not a beam. Oh, it, I think my point is, is that 
other networks like Tendermint networks, like Chihuahua Chain, like the Solana testnet, provide equivalent amount of security there, even for liveness no. and censorship resistance. No. Yes. Because I go on Chihuahua, I, need, I buy whatever required number of tokens. Let's say I need to spend $10 yeah. million dollars to get okay. enough tokens, Chihuahua tokens, to go for and, the 2% attack. And you attack take it. all the MEV can... for a day. And people yes. recognize that you take all the MEV and they fork and slash you. Okay, so, so now... you do agree that now it basically depends on how much profit you make. Now, we have no, ambition sure. in the firm, which no. is to be the internet of value. <laughs> we want to have trillions tens of trillions of dollars that are settled and traded sure. on Ethereum. If you can disrupt the internet of value, even for one hour, even for one minute, that is worth an insane amount of money. It's not. And we cannot have the, the rest of tens the of trillions of dollars secured by $1 billion of economic security. Go ahead, Anatoly. The rest of the world runs on T plus two to T plus 10 settlement. It handles trillions of dollars. It has outages all the time and liveness failures. It works. So you're trying to replace it with a better system. I get it. But you can't tell me that an hour outage or 10 hour outage is fundamentally going to stop the world and everyone's going to be a panic on fire. That's just bullshit. So like, yeah, economic security protects against a very specific attack, but that attack does not exist on any other chain because it requires more than Epsilon stake. You have to go buy a huge chunk. It's detected. Once it's detected, the attacker is slashed. So that that effect exists on every chain. The fact that it's okay, detectable so and the fact that it's easy to trivial to slash, those are the things that secure the Solana testnet and the Tendermint Chihuahua chain. And this is why you don't see these attacks anywhere. So you can't tell me like, what why... Why like this meme is bad is like you're using it as bad marketing. Ethereum has World War III level economic security. It's bullshit. Because one, I can't tell looking at the stake and there's no way you can prove to me that all of that stake didn't come from the ICO. There's zero way you can guarantee that the cost basis for all the current stakers is not what they pay, like the ICO price. There's no way you can prove that. It's impossible. I trust that it's not because I, I'm not I'm a rational person that believes in mostly functioning markets and most people are honest and stuff like that. But if we're doing hard analysis and like what can we actually prove, you cannot prove that. So the actual economic security based on some number based on a current spot market price is meaningless. The act, real security is it's detectable, it's apparent in, in any network, and that's why we don't see them in even test nuts. No. So I think we've agreed that economic security is not a meme because it is relevant it is to this meme. one specific, because it is relevant it, to this attack called censorship. It, it's uh, a meme and because that attack is every network, proof of stake network does as good of a job defending against that as Ethereum may not. Okay. So what you're saying basically is that if this attack were to happen, then the social layer can come in and do social slashing which is correct, but there's a, f a, few, a few points here. One, social interventions are extremely expensive. We've gone through one in Ethereum's history. It's called Ethereum Classic, it's called the DAO. It is not something that you want to go into. So, so, Secondly- So, it's, so it's, it's what, $300 billion worth of economic security to defend against an attack that never happens on any proof of stake network. It's, it's never happened because <laughs> two things need to happen. One is you need to have a sophisticated attacker who knows about this attack and is willing to plan it. And two, the incentives need to be there. Right now, almost all of the value secured on Ethereum is Ether itself and it's staking. So in some sense, there's nothing to attack. But project yourself 10 years in the future where tens you of trillions, short, hundreds of trillions. Ether. I could potentially take over an Ethereum testnet cause it to double spend, right, with my economic attack while shorting Ethereum and say, look, there's a bug in Ethereum. Everyone panics, Ethereum drops. Yeah, and but this is there's, actually- There's a massive economic incentive to attack an Ethereum testnet that has zero cost, right? I assume in terms of economic security. Yeah, so this particular attack wouldn't necessarily work because the social layer n knows that it can fork it and it doesn't affect the rest of the market. But once you're willing to f censor oracles, you're willing to f censor fault proofs, 
willing to censor liquidations and you know market buys and market sells, then you're in a yeah. position where you can harvest toxic MEV. And if the amount of toxic MEV that you can harvest is greater than the cost of attack, then yes, it's going to happen. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Now, you said that the social layer can intervene. That is correct. But that is a very expensive process. How is it any more expensive than rebooting from an outage? Well, in, in, in the case of... In, <laughs> In, in, in the case of, of, of Solana, you know, these outages don't have real significance because there's, there's no value on, on, on Solana. It has but we need to the be, same revenue as Ethereum. It's not about revenue. It's about like TVL and things like that. Solana has 0.7% of all USDT. Um, it is, why is like that, why minuscule. Is the, why, why are outages important for TVL that's sitting at rest and doing nothing? Why is it, revenue is no, what's no, actually No, no, it needs important. to be, it needs to be active. So it needs to be, you know, like there needs to be over collateralized loans. There needs to be. Which uh, is determined by revenue, right? The, a proxy for all that activity is actual on-chain revenue. No, like a lot of the revenue for the validators, you know, come in this form of, of sandwiching, right? Like this is one of the primary forms of revenue. Sure. On Solana so right MEV, now. so MEV plus. Priority fees on Solana are about equal to Ethereum L1. No, but so, uh, we're talking about like really, really toxic levels of MEV. Like sandwiching is nothing compared to the type of MEV that you can harvest if you were sure. to do a 51% attack. But like, so if somebody does that and that, that's bad, the network halts, slashes them and moves on. And it's a 24 hour thing. Okay, let's say I can make $10 billion from this attack and it only cost me $1 billion. That is that 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 is that is a bad outcome. Now another it's thing, unlike it's unlikely that that could be true because you would have to go buy up all of this. It it seems unlikely that the revenues within twenty four hours, the maximum MEV revenues could be that high, ten billion dollars. That are basically the threshold here is if it takes twenty four hours to go. Fuck this! Fuck over this attacker, right? They're doing the bad thing. Everyone halts. They get slashed in the fork, and everyone continues. That's a twenty-four hour process. Maybe they have to make more money than than the fifty percent of the stake within that twenty-four hours. Okay, so there's a couple things here. One is that they can pick whatever twenty-four hours has the most impact. Like they can pick, you know, whenever sure. like the Fed so decides to so change their a, rates so, or whatever. So, so the Potential Secondly, for revenue, it doesn't take right? 24 hours. <laughs> like we're talking potentially an event that can take, you know, days to, 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 to resolve. And thirdly, in your end game document, one of the things that you highlight, Anatoly, is this idea of sampling committees. You talk about committees of size 200, um, where let's say you have 20,000 validators, you pick a committee of size 200, and now only 1% of the validators are in control of the chain for a whole epoch, which is, let's say, two days. What are you going to do? You're going to slash one third of the 1%, which is like 0.3%. And now the attacker can do the attack again and again and again and again. And so what um, you're suggesting in your game, no, end game is ugly because it, the social slashing doesn't even work there. Um, I would imagine the stake representation there is going to be higher than 1%, simply because when you're sampling like power law distribution of nodes, you're... 200 nodes already make up more than like 50%. What an attacker will Ethereum. do is that they'll spread their stake across, you know, equally across but then, validators. But then they're not going to be majority in the subcommittee. They're only no, going to be are... picked, right? Like they need like, if you're, if you have like 10% of the stake, you're going to be in, ten, in like, you're going to have 10% of the subcommittee. In any case, there is like a degradation of the amount that is slashed. It's, you're not going to slash the whole attacker. The attacker can do the attack several times. Sure. And again, that's just like in Chihuahua chain, they buy 10 million worth of Chihuahua coins, they do the attack, they get detected, they get slashed. This is why it doesn't happen. Because so, the, the so revenue you're that you can get, slashing. We, we, you we, cannot we are full circle to uh, Chihuahua chain again. So I, I just want, I don't think uh, <laughs> e either of you is uh, c convincing the other one of the point. So Anatoly, the, your position There's never been, there's never been this level of attack in any proof of stake network. It happens in like proof of work networks because you can do an anonymous 51% attack. And this is like the, the big flaw in proof of stake in proof of work is one is you can roll back two weeks worth of Ethereum classic with an anonymous 
like chain of of links and nobody knows who you are and you effectively like robbed everyone that believed the previous thing but in proof of stake you have branded validators that compete for stake and like they're staked for an epoch so there's a cooldown and warm-up period so they're known and it's very very hard to get to even point to what you can do and once you pull off the attack everyone knows who did it immediately like it's just and the like the information is out there so you're completely left yourself open to being slashed immediately this meme is 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 benign in ethereum because ethereum does a really really good job with engineering and they actually do have a lot of validators and a lot of links and independent clients all that stuff they do it's a dangerous meme for everyone else because people will like luna will roll up to some absurd number of stake and say we have massive economic security where it's like not real in any way <laughs> and that gives people false confidence i would actually like what i would what wish ethereum would do is just like forget that meme just talk about the really excellent engineering like these attacks are impossible because the engineering is really really good so Luna is incomparable. Like they were not building; they were building a stable coin, and the design was just flawed. But they their TVL, building. their st the amount of stake that they had stake to not, secure their proof of stake network was massive, and they could literally just go say we have that massive is economic security. It takes a lot of work to go and like parse those details and to tell a person that's not like plugged in no you can't compare that economic security to Ethereum's, but you can literally easily say look. That's a hundred nodes all run by the same people. This is bajillion nodes geographically distributed with a bajillion links. This is secure. This is not. <laughs> okay. So, so like, once again, on the uh, item of economic security, is there anything predictive you could say? Like, so like, I think listeners might be asking, why does all of this matter? Right. So like, Justin, why, why, why is that bad in your book that, you know, you think that economic security does matter and that it's bad for Anatoly to propagate it and say that it doesn't matter. And I think listeners might be wondering why, like, why, why did we just have this conversation, this debate about economic security? And if you're right, is there something predictive that you can say about some kind of future attack that Solana or chains like it might face if they're not considering uh, economic security? Because yeah. we can, we could test that in the future. Somebody with actually weak security will have strong economic security and they will get wrecked. That's this your prediction. Bad outcome. Okay. This, this is the bad outcome that I think as an industry, we should try to strive to avoid, right? Because then you're, you're giving people like a very, very easy meme to like brand themselves with versus really, really hard engineering, which is hard to do. I see. And, like and, and you're saying that at some level that's already happened with something like Terra Luna, uh, yeah. as, you know, using economic security as a, as a meme. Uh, Justin, how would you put a bookend on on why this matters? I think it's more of an intellectual point for Solana specifically, because ironically, Solana has very high amounts of economic security because the vast majority of its I of don't its trust soul it. is <laughs> I don't, don't trust the economic security on Solana. Well, you do trust that the social layer can slash them if they were to misbehave, it, right? But you can't say that the chain is more secure, like, what is it, 20 times more secure now than a year ago. You cannot you possibly can. say you that. Can. No, you, you can can't. because there is money to be made from 51% <laughs> attacks. And now the money to be made needs to be so much higher to compensate for the loss of slashing. Now, in terms of a concrete prediction, what my prediction would be that like some smaller chain that has much lower amounts of economic security than Solana will get 51% attacked and will be harvested for toxic MEV through, for example, the censoring of oracles. If you enjoyed all of that, then you'll absolutely love the Bankless newsletter. Join over 300,000 fellow readers, all for free. Click below to sign up.